Hello, this is Lewis at Global Marine Networks. Uh, this is the third video in a series on how to use your iOS device with the Iridium Access Point mail-in web service to receive uh, weather information on your iOS device. Um, in our first video, we discussed um, the hardware and the Access Point offering by Iridium and how to register the service. In our second video, we talked about how to install Access Point mail-in web on our iOS device and how to use it. And in our third video, we're going to discuss a specific application, which is how to download weather on your uh, iOS device. Uh, so we're now running an iPhone simulator here, and I'll do the demonstration using that since it's not possible for me to record the screen on the um, iOS device directly. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to um, run a specific application, which is a weather application for downloading weather over Iridium for those of you who are out at sea or who are in remote locations and would like to acquire a forecast. Access Point Mail and Web uses two or can work with two different applications on the internet uh, which can request and display weather information. One of them is iNavX and the other one is Weather4D. iNavX is a very nice electronic charting program which is available for $49 from the iTunes store. It allows you to drive your boat, uh, download charts and display your position using the GPS on the device um, on the specific maps or charts that you download. It also has been interfaced into Access Point Mail and Web so that you can use that program to request weather information that is downloaded over your reading phone using Access Point Mail and Web and then transferred back to the application for display uh, and analysis. Weather4D is another application which is a weather only application which is available on the iTunes store for about six dollars. It works very much the same way. It has been interfaced into Access Point Mail and Web and it allows you to request weather information, download it and display it. So today we're going to focus on iNavX um, and so you notice that there's an icon on the desktop for iNavX which we've uh, purchased and installed. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this specific application. Suffice it to say that it is a charting program that allows you to do navigation. Um, it has some charts. Uh, I've downloaded the charts and installed the charts for the east coast of the U.S. And so I've got detailed navigation charts for this entire area. Uh, and right now I'm displaying the Gulf of Mexico uh, because I'm going to request weather, wind weather information for this particular region. Now the way this program works is when you request weather, it'll request weather for the region that is being displayed on the screen. And so I've got the Gulf of Mexico displayed here. So I'm going to, I can go ahead and uh, use my pinch zoom to zoom in for the specific region that I want or zoom out. Since I want the entire Gulf of Mexico, I'll go ahead and select that region and center it. And uh, now I can go down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen and there's an icon there called forecast. So I'll click on forecast and um, there's some parameter information so I can specify what kind of information I want to download. So in this particular instance, I'm going to do a three day wind forecast with one degree resolution for an area which is 30 degrees wide using the GFS area and specifying that I want to retrieve that using the access point application which is specified on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and at this point I can say request grip file. So um, here are the different things. I'm just going to do surface wind and at that point it's going to bring up access point mail and web for me and you'll notice that I have an email in the outbox. That email was generated by the application, by the iNavX application, with my specific wind request. So I do a normal email session now. I'll go ahead and do a send and receive, and uh, it'll go ahead and connect and send the uh, request. Now, receiving weather over the iPhone is a two step process. First, you uh, connect to the device and you send the request, then you wait for a minute or two and then receive the request and download the file. Now at this point I notice that I have zero signal on my phone so the access point mail failed to do an email connection just telling me that there was not sufficient signal. So we'll go ahead and wait a second here and then try again um, until we can successfully go ahead and do this session. Uh, when doing data over Iridium it's best to have five unwavering uh, bars of signal 
we're in the mountains of Tennessee doing this and so we have a lot of occlusions and obstructions so um, it's not possible for us to get good signal all the time um, but out in the ocean uh, you should have 24 by 7 coverage signal should not be an issue especially if you have an external antenna installed with your region phone which we really highly recommend so right now we're connecting to the service and um, we're uh, going to go ahead and send our request as I mentioned before this is a two-step process the first stage is to send the request which we have now done and then we wait a minute or two and then receive our request. Now while we're waiting for this let me show you a nifty little feature in Iridium Access Point Mail and Web. Um, if you go to the settings section and you go to um, your, connect, your connection settings you'll notice that there's several different uh, parameters here. One of them is a text parameter at the bottom of the screen. You see that? Text when mail is available. This is a very nice feature which allows you to have the Iridium Access Point mail server send you an SMS message when there's mail pending. So if you turn this on and you put in your Iridium phone number, anytime a mail message arrives at the Iridium server, you'll get an SMS message. So if I had enabled that service, then my phone would have beeped when my weather forecast was ready and I wouldn't have to waste the connection seeing if I've got mail. So I'm going to go ahead and now check for mail. I should have a mail message re ready for me. Um, so again, this is my second connection to retrieve the message. Right now I'm kind of shooting blind because I didn't have SMS enabled and so I don't know for fact that there's mail waiting for me. Um, but it usually takes the weather server for this particular service that was selected just a minute or so to generate the forecast. And so usually you can do the connections back to back to receive to receive the weather. So here we are waiting for our second connection. As I've stated numerous times during this presentation, uh, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds for Iridium to establish a connection to the gateway. Once it's established, it will receive the message. Now, I've received a mail message here. Um, which should be my weather forecast. So I'm going to come over here and uh, you'll notice that um, my inbox is empty so I didn't receive a weather forecast. I do have something in my big mail. Now big mail is a feature in access point mail and web which protects you from large attachments. Any attachment which is larger than a specific size will be left on the server and it will not be downloaded. However, the service will inform you that a mail message is pending for you that is of excess size and um, allows you to download it if you require it. Now you notice that this is a message containing my weather forecast and the size is 77,000 bytes. Now Iridium transfers data at about 15 kilobytes per minute. So uh, once you know the size of the large message, uh, you can pretty much tell how long it's going to take. So this particular message, if I take 77 and I divide it by 15, uh, it tells me that it's going to take about five minutes to download this weather forecast. So I can click on here. I can click down here on the bottom and say the message has been queued for retrieval. So I um, I've now, it's no longer my big message. I selected the message for retrieval. I could have tossed the message if I no longer wanted it, but you'll notice now that um, I've queued the message and next time I connect it will download it. Before I download it, I want to go back over here to the settings and show you how you can change the size parameters. You'll notice here that you have an inbound limit of 50 kilobytes. If you wanted to, you could go in here and change that and that would allow you to download messages without having to go through this process. It's not recommended that you do this because, like I say, Iridium Airtime is fairly expensive and you want to protect yourself. But had I selected, for example, 100 kilobytes or 150 kilobytes, then I would have received that message directly into my inbox without having to go through this multiple stage uh, retrieval process. Um, anyway, I'm going to go into mail now and go ahead and hit send and receive uh, to retrieve that 77 kilobyte message that uh, is now queued and pending for me to download. Again, that's a very powerful feature in Access Point Mail and Web designed to protect you from large attachments. Uh, keep in mind that one megabyte of data, which is about the size of a typical photo taken, um, let me just go ahead and try this again. So um, we were unable to connect, so 
accept and receive. Uh, one megabyte, which is a typical size of a photo, uh, takes about 68 minutes to download over Iridium. So if you're paying a dollar a minute uh, for Iridium, that would be $70 to receive that one photo over a period of an hour. So you want to be very careful with your large attachments and use that big mail feature to protect yourself from uh, those downloads. Similarly, although we haven't discussed this, outbound emails are also protected. And so if you go to the settings, you'll notice that there's an outbound size as well. That outbound size um, is set for about 250 kilobytes. Um, and um, so downloaded a message and uh, we still see that we've got a big mail message in the inbox. Now, the reason for that is because I made a mistake. Um, the little icon on the bottom left hand corner is a resync. That just basically tells the server to send you a message to resync and tell you what's on the server that hasn't been downloaded. To retrieve a message using big mail, and I went, I uh, did this wrong the first time, so let me just fix that for you with my mistakes, apologize for that, is you click on the message, and when you click on the message, it'll ask you for options. You can delete the message from the server, or you can download the message from the server. Now, if you go back and you send and receive, you'll go ahead and you'll download your message. So um, again, uh, just a usage issue there. Uh, it's important to know about that little refresh button on the left hand bottom corner. The reason for that is because you may have several iOS devices and uh, you might switch between your iPhone and your iPad. So if you didn't download your big mail message on your iPhone and you wanted to download it on your iPad, when you go to your iPad, your iPad doesn't know about that message that's sitting on the server. And so if you hit the little refresh button on the bottom left hand corner, that just tells the access point mail application to go to the server, find out what's there, and then repopulate the big mail list so that you can come back and then select the message. Um, and so we've done that now. And so this time we will successfully download our, our email. So we're waiting for the Iridium connection to come up. Oh, I've lost my signal, so it's going to fail here. And uh, when that happens, we'll just go ahead and wait a second here and then try this again. Okay, so let's go ahead and try again. This time we have signal again. And so, as I stated before, if you're out in the ocean, this will not become an issue. Uh, here in the mountains of Tennessee, it's kind of difficult to do uh, Iridium transmissions just because the satellites are moving pretty quickly. It takes about 12 minutes for the satellites to go horizon to horizon. We have a lot of trees and mountains in this particular area, and so consequently our signal is, uh, fluctuates um, consistently. And so we do have signal now, and so hopefully here in uh, the next 10 or 15 seconds we'll start our download and complete our download. Okay, here we go. And we've now retrieved our file. Now you notice that it didn't take five minutes to retrieve this file and the reason for that is because we're running in a simulator and although we are actually connecting to an Iridium phone, the data transmission was done over an internet connection. Um, now several things in the log file. You notice that there's a sending. Uh, well there's our request, to, that 375 byte request. That's the request to retrieve the file. You notice that the original file that we requested to download was 77 kilobytes. Uh, the actual file that was transmitted was 56 kilobytes, and the reason for that is because we have compression. So we've now completed the download. The phone has, the phone has now been taken offline. In the inbox, you notice that we have a mail message. And um, actually, we have two mail messages. We have the original mail message, which was used to sync the list. That was my original request, which was not for the file. Uh, that's just telling me that indeed we resync the list. And then we have the second message, which contains an attachment. Uh, the attachment can be viewed by scrolling to the bottom of the file. And so if we scroll to the bottom of the message, as we're trying to do now, um, you will see that indeed there it is. And it's not very visible, um, but we can use pinch zoom to uh, zoom the message and then uh, scroll down to the bottom of the message. It's much easier to do this with fingers than with the mouse. Okay, there it is, and there's our there's there's our attachment. Now, um, so this is a regular mail message. Um, as with all mail messages, you can click on the uh, little arrow icon on the bottom, and you can print the message. You can reply. You can reply all. You can forward the messages as you could with any other message in the system. 
Also, while I'm here, let me show you what this little icon does. This is a folder icon, which allows you to file the uh, messages into uh, into a folder. So, if you were to create multiple folders, um, which is done in the main display menu, um, then you could go ahead and move the message into one of those particular folders. So now what we want to do is we want to open this and display the weather file. So we'll scroll to the very bottom of the message. We'll click on the attachment and that will bring up a, a dialog. Now um, if Weather4D were installed on this iPod then uh, we would see the program show up there. Right now the only um, program that is able to display grid files is iNavX. And so by clicking on this button here I will transfer the attachment to iNavX for display. So let's go ahead and do that. And we notice that iNavX comes up and the uh, grid file is imported into the program. So um, to display the grid file we go back here under forecast and we click on forecast and we see that the grid file is listed there under the uh, under the uh, the display here and if we had several grid files that would be showing here we can click on the particular grid file that we want to display you'll see the, the different parameters that are listed here if I want to look at the wind and the pressure for this particular day I can go ahead and just select it and um, and there are my wind arrows uh, I can go back here and uh, select a different day for example and uh, display the uh, grid file for that particular day or I can come up here to the display and uh, cycle through the different wind arrows for that particular grid file uh, and see what my weather forecast is. Anyway, this concludes our um, demonstration of uh, how to display grid files in the iPhone. I hope you have found this very helpful. So this is Lewis signing off, uh, wishing you guys a good day and until the next video, uh, take care.